Hello everybody and welcome back to This Week in Halo, the video that catches you up on everything you might have missed this week Halo related and we've got a lot to talk about today. From the massive Halo Infinite update to the finale of the second season of the Halo TV show, there is even some amazing Forge creations we need to talk about as well as a rumour of the next Halo game. As you can probably tell by the title, I have literally called it the next Halo game and this actually stems from me asking my followers on Twitter, when do you think the next Halo game is going to come out? Some people are saying 2025, 2026, even some said 2030. The most interesting reply in this thread was grunt.api saying the next spin-off slash standalone game or the next mainline Halo title. And everyone's like, excuse me? What do you mean spin-off Halo title? This is the first I'm hearing of it. I don't know if anyone watching this video has more information, but I am very curious as to what he means by this. A spin-off Halo title could be anything. Flood Horror, Sergeant Johnson prequel game, it could even be ODST 2. I will say on that note that Grunt.API said a standalone Halo title, which probably rules out Halo Wars 3, because just by very definition, if Halo Wars 3 does come out, that kind of makes it a trilogy. The good news with this is if 343 is making a spin-off Halo game, or whoever is making it, we might actually get a new Halo game very soon, and we may even get a preview this year, depending on how far along they are with it. Even Halo 5 to Halo Infinite Era, we got Halo Wars 2, so it makes sense to release a spin-off title while the next mainline entry into the series is being worked on. Once we hear more, I'll make a follow-up video, but it was such big news, I just had to mention it. Now next up we have Halo Infinite, and Forges have recreated the Pillar of Autumn from Halo Combat Evolved the entire level in Halo Infinite's Forge. We have said it a lot, the Forges are carrying Halo Infinite, and that is very much the case, and this level is incredible. You can play it with your friends, it is made identical Identically to Halo Combat Evolved. I had a quick playthrough of today. I'm going to link everybody who made the map in the description. Check them out. They did an amazing job. The Pillar of Autumn on Halo Infinite is a must play. Now, it wouldn't be a This Week in Halo if I didn't talk about the big Halo Infinite update. It's been out for three to four days now, and I did a massive video outlining absolutely everything in this update. If you haven't watched it, it's going to be in the end screen. Check it out. But what I will say is after the three days, I have been tweaking, altering, and changing my settings, and I think I've got them in a really good place that even with high ping, I'm seeing an actual improvement in my gameplay. I'm playing a lot more consistently, and you'll see that in tomorrow's video, but my overall accuracy, how snappy my reticule feels, is much, much better than before the update. Even the sniper rifle, and this is for both good and bad connection, you don't have to lead your shots anymore, and it's actually made the weapons more viable than it was before the update. There are all these little things that you don't notice on the first day of the update, as you really have to play and jump into the game, and then over time, all these small things you find that have actually improved with the new networking model. I'm not not sure if this was intended, but you can actually drop weapons ultra fast again. You map a keybind for the drop weapon feature, it will instantly drop to your secondary again. You can also punch the boxes around on Harvest, they're not janky anymore, and even without a repulsor because the networking is better, it will splatter players. To be truthfully honest, it feels like a proper Halo game now, and I hope for the future, especially on Last Resort, it's called Cusini Bay on Halo Infinite, the wheel will actually spin now. I want to see more environmental hazards, I want to see interactable map features, and I want to see things moving on the map. On the whole, it is an amazing update. Check it out if you haven't already. I think most people are really going to like it. And for the people who are having a rougher experience, I'm hoping tomorrow's video is going to help you. Next up is the Halo TV show. So here is your spoiler alert if you haven't seen this episode of the Halo TV show. But let's get into it. It was the season 2 finale last night. The introduction to the Flood. The Master Chief 1v1 dueling the Arbiter. And they have finally landed on the Halo ring. There is a lot that I really loved about the episode. I love the energy sword duel between the Arbiter and the Master Chief. I love the inside section of the Covenant ship. I also really love Kai's sacrifice. I don't think she's dead as they show her floating in space. Kind of like how Master Chief was found at the start of Halo Infinite. So I don't think she's dead yet. Now of course it wouldn't be the Halo TV show without some cringy moments and there were some things I certainly have gripes about. The coin flipping scene was very cliche. The silly scientist who just touches the unknown artifact after Miranda was shown handling it with bio 
biohazard gloves. However, I was surprised they actually did tentacles for the first flood reveal. I'm not going to be too harsh on the actual flood at the moment, as since these humans were infected by spores and not infection forms, it very much reminded me of the book where the ancient humans actually introduced the flood, the precursor dust, into their livestock, and then over time they turned into the flood. It wasn't an instant transformation, but it slowly turned them into the grotesque flood we know. So it's my hope that this was the initial introduction, and then for season three, they show full-on combat forms, proper infection forms, and even carrier forms. As a very quick side note, it was cool they introduced 343 Guilty Spark, and Quan Ha has the most plot armor I have ever seen. It was a straight ass pull. I'll leave it at that. There's also been a lot of discussion. Is the Halo TV show going to return for a third season? And actually, one of the crew members posted a photo from Budapest, and one of the comments asked them, Halo the series season three question mark, to which the crew member actually liked the comment. They must be scouting locations for the next season, but with how season two ended, a third season seems very likely. Next up, there's a Halo crossover in Rainbow Six Siege. Again, instead of making a proper model for it, they've just straight up ripped Kelly's model from Halo 5. I gotta be honest, it looks okay, but it looks kind of low res, or am I the only one who thinks that? It just kind of looks unfinished. And when you compare it to the Master Chief armor that looked really good, maybe because that was a newer model, I think more work could have been done here. Many people were saying it's a straight cash grab, and it's very odd that they picked Kelly of all Spartans. Maybe they're planning to add more in future. We don't. No. Finally today, I'm not going to say that I warned 343, but I warned absolutely everyone that if Halo Infinite moves to easy anti-cheat, there is going to be more people hacking on the game. And so many of you guys submitted this to me. Within one day of the new update, people are uploading videos titled Undetectable Halo Infinite Hack. And the dude literally has aimbot, he can see through walls. I'm honestly really concerned and I hope this doesn't become a really big issue. The Master Chief Collection is already really bad, so I really, really hope 343 is on top of this, hopefully me bringing some awareness to it and just be like, hey, keep an eye on this. We don't want cheaters on our game. So that is everything, guys. That is this week in Halo. Probably the biggest Halo Infinite update went live this week. The season finale of the second season of the Halo TV show aired. Some amazing Forge creations from the incredible Forge community. Even the new squad battle maps we got also made by the Forge community. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Brand new video out tomorrow, and I'll see you guys later.